Welcome to Translating Tech, a new series where we take techie lingo and break it down piece by piece. I'm Susan with Language Tech Solutions, and today we're talking about spam. No, not that spam. We're digging into those pesky phone calls, text messages, and emails that never seem to stop. Spam is a term used to describe any irrelevant or unsolicited messages sent in bulk. Those of us from the early days of the internet might remember email chain letters, but as your data has gotten more valuable, spammers have developed more sophisticated ways to get it. And today, the consequences from a spam attack can be devastating. When most people talk about spam, they're referring to something called phishing. And while it might be spelled differently, it has a lot more in common with that phishing than you might think. The end goal for both is to lure someone else into unsuspecting danger. For a fish, that means becoming dinner, but for you, it could mean losing your accounts, stolen financial information, and even identity theft. In the past, these schemes may have been reserved for telephone or email spam, but in recent years, smishing has been on the rise. Much like phishing, the goal of these text message scams is to get your personal information, social security number, credit card info, emails, and logins. Be wary of clicking links you're not expecting in text messages. And stay smart when replying to messages from senders you don't know. And this is a courtesy call to renew your warranty before we close the file. If you're watching this, I'm willing to bet you've gotten this exact voicemail at least once in the past year. Spam phone calls are nothing new, but just like with email, the methods spammers are using to get you to pick up are evolving. Be careful answering personal questions from callers you don't know. Spammers might present themselves as someone from a trusted company, so when in doubt, do a quick search for their number to make sure it's legit before giving out any personal info. Blocking spam numbers from your phone and adding yourself to a do not call list can help cut down the number of spam calls you get overall. I'm sure we're all familiar with pop-up ads, but you might be surprised to hear that they're still around and most have adapted to the times. If a social media ad or giveaway seems too good to be true, it probably is. Be wary of promoted ads for free gifts, or offers in exchange for filling out account credentials or other personal information. Also look out for offers of free products where all you have to do is pay for shipping. Oftentimes, after your personal and credit card information is sent, you'll never actually receive the items. With the effects of COVID-19 on the job market, it's important to keep an eye out for phishing related to job ads. Spammers are looking to take advantage of the applicant boom by posting job ads that seem legit, often displaying company logos and appropriate lingo, to lure targets into clicking and handing over their personal information. They'll use well-known search sites, direct emails, or even messaging on social media sites to target new victims. Protect yourself by vetting job postings through legitimate company websites and always checking up on the profiles of people who send you postings directly. The majority of email spam that you'll get is what we would call spoofing emails. Another form of phishing, these emails copy the formatting and appearance of their email addresses from a legitimate sender, usually a company or a contact that you trust. While sometimes it's easy to spot these spam emails, Spammers are getting more and more sophisticated, making it harder to distinguish these from legit emails. Most commonly, these emails are styled to look like messages from banks, social media sites, streaming services, or even utility and healthcare providers. They'll usually include links to reset your password, update payment information, or enter your login to confirm. Due to COVID-19, we're even seeing spoof emails related to vaccination appointments and information. As with all spam, the main goal of these emails is to trick you out of your info, so it's best to keep an eye out for the red flags. A lot of spammers will disguise their email using the real name of a company or contact instead. Always check the actual return email address to make sure it's coming from who they're claiming to be. Most legitimate companies, especially banks, won't be using a Gmail account to send you an update. 
Look for specific placeholders in the body copy, like your name and usernames. If these are missing or replaced with a generic user placeholder, red flag. Misspelled words or incorrect information are another huge red flag. Big sites like Google or Instagram won't have outdated copyright information, addresses, or obvious spelling mistakes in their emails. When in doubt, trash it. It's best to log into your account from the actual website or call the company to confirm that your information is needed. Sometimes you are an even more tempting target than your information. And in 2021, we're seeing the rise in a particularly tricky form of email phishing called thread hijacking. This happens when a spammer successfully tricks you into clicking something and infecting your device. You may have no idea, but once they're in, they use tools to access your existing email conversations and take over the thread with spam messages. A lot of times, these will be new replies with infected images, documents, or links disguised as quotes and invoices. Once clicked, they will infect the next machine and continue the cycle over and over. We say thread hijacking is particularly tricky because unlike traditional spam emails, these appear to be coming from a legitimate source. Spammers are counting on your email address and the existing conversations they're piggybacking on to gain the trust of their targets. That's why you should always be cautious when opening attachments you are not expecting, especially when the title of the attachment or the body of the email are intentionally vague about what the attachment might be. If you think something is fishy, it probably is. It's always best to delete suspicious emails and send a new email to that contact, letting them know if you're concerned. Never respond to the email chain you suspect as hijacked and never open or download suspicious attachments or links. To quote our beloved 80s icon, G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. And when it comes to spam, Knowing and understanding which threats are out there can help you make sure your devices and information are safe online. That's our video. Give us a thumbs up if you found this spam roundup helpful. Leave a comment below and let us know which tech terms we should translate next. As always, we upload weekly, so like and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest videos.